Hey, thank you for coming out today. My, if you don't know me, my name is Carrie Edinger. I'm the Sheridan Community Land Trust Historic Program Manager. And every second Tuesday, we do an explore history here at the hub or do some kind of on-site tour. Spring is coming, so I am planning new tours. Um, today, I wanted to share with you a project that we've been working on. It is the history along our water trail. And um, we have volunteers out in the audience who have water trail maps, if you would like one to follow along. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> um, and we also have Zoom going on today, people participating on Zoom. We put the link for the water trail map in the Zoom chat box. If you have questions on the Zoom end, please put them in the chat box. And Brad is following the chat box. Um, this project, excuse me, this project was a partnership with the Abandoned Minelands Association and a little back history with our water trail. The Tongue River Water Trail is a paddling trail and was routed by SCLT and other partners around 2015. The trail is the streams and rivers and is a long-term vision of the Sheridan community to realize public access and safe floating conditions for na navigatable public waterways. So approximately 95% of the property within the Tongue River and Goose Creek systems are private held lands. So this has been kind of a long-term vision of working with private landowners for public access for a floating system. So can here, turn it up. <laughs> we'll work on the audio. So with your maps, the little and big Goose Creek sites, there are 10 access sites to this portion of the water trail. And then for the Tongue River and Goose Creek sites, there are three access sites. So moving along to the project, this project was done approximately a year ago. And as you see, we have updated the water trail map, which is part of the project. And that will also go on the sign systems that mark each public access site along our water trail. And this is a picture of the old sign at Mill Park. Um, water trail info that has to do with accessible sites, safety issues. Also, this is where the abandoned mine land programs was part of our partnership and part of their public outreach to identify hazards relating to old coal sites along the water trail. The Tongue River kind of visits the old coal sites north of Sheridan. And then last but not least is all the history info related to the water trail sites. The Sheridan Community Land Trust has three missions. It is recreation, conservation, and history. And we work hard to put all those missions together. So that's one reason why the water trail signage has been updated to include the history. So here is a sample of one of these signs. Um, this one is at, at Padlock Ranch Access. It has the history portion and then also the map. And then in the red area is the hazards. I know it's really hard to read at the moment, but the red is all the hazard areas. Then along the bottom is information of how to contact if you see hazards or to follow a trail map on the digital GPS app. And we also include images related to the history. So to begin our virtual tour today, we will start with a little and big use creek sites. So if you want to follow along, that's on your map. And we will start at the southern part of Sheridan, the South Park site. This is Dr. Delilah Turner Sprague Babcock. Sonnesburg, and there's a reason for all of her last names. <laughs> she arrived in Sheridan in 1883. She moved from Johnson County, Wyoming Territory, where she was known for her family to be one of the early pioneers moving to the northern frontier of Wyoming in 1878. 
1881, she was the first woman to cast her ballot in Johnson County. She was a prominent landowner in Sheridan and owned the entire southeastern part of town, which approximately would be where North Scott Street is and the surrounding area of Hawking Avenue. Delilah was a physician and studied medicine in Illinois in 1876. She was pretty much ahead of her time. Um, so she outlived all three of her husbands and most of her seven children. August 16th is a significant date in Delilah's life. It is the same date she was born, she died, and twice married. Delilah's strong religious views are seen within her property deeds. So she included clauses in these deeds of the land to be used so no houses of ill repute would be put on the land that she once owned. Like I said, she was ahead of her time. <laughs> So Sheltered Acres site is our next site. Um, this re is referring to all the early history that depicts Big Goose Creek and Little Goose Creek. Um, it is stated that the creeks were named by early settlers traveling through this area for the numerous wild geese found in this migratory habitat. The town of Sheridan started out as a farming community and the relatively low elevation offered for a more moderate climate and possibly longer growing seasons. So the Goose Creek Valley had temporary European habitats of trappers, hay contractors, and then moved on to more permanent settlers that appeared in 1877. In late 1870s, the Patrick brothers operated an early stagecoach route along the Bozeman Trail and found the PK Ranch in Soldier Creek, along Soldier Creek, and that is all west of Sheridan. So in an 1880 census, it was recorded that 72 people were living along Big and Little, Big and Little Goose Creeks. So the downtown Sheridan site, um, Little and Big Goose Creek, run through the city of Sheridan and it runs north. Both of these curvy waterways have been rerouted for the expansion of the town and also flood control. Little Goose Creek was the first to be routed for the railroad, the building of the railroad station and also Sheridan Inn. And um, that was about in the 1890s. And as you know, it's put into a straight like canal or channel form. So to stop flooding, the Big Goose Creek wasn't rerouted to the 1960s. One of the worst floods in the area was in 1923. Heavy rain expanded the creeks, banks so much that Kendrick Park and the whole town of Sheridan was flooded. And from this picture, this is after the flood, of course, um, Sheridan Main Street was paved with wooden pavers and you can see how the flood lifted the wooden pavers. Um, I have not yet seen one of these wooden pavers, so if anybody has one, I hear they use them sometimes in gardens. I would like to see one sometime. Oh, good. Okay. I've only heard about them. So moving on to Leopard Street. Just three miles west of Sheridan, along Big Goose, was a farm called KN Gardens. And please bear with me with my Japanese pronunciation. The owners of the farm were Japanese immigrants who were Hazabur Oskaraki, or later Kamara, Jura Hai, George Nishi, and J. Yamashita. The estimated time frame for the operation of the KN Gardens was from the early 1900s to 1919. KN Garden was known for vegetables, and in 1917 at the Wyoming State Fair in Douglas, they won first prize for red onions, table squash, and turnips. From the Sheridan Enterprise publication in February of 1919, KN Garden owners announced they decided to quit farming and had a large public sale of their farm equipment and household goods. The four partners went their own way and on to other business ventures. A couple of the men stayed in Sheridan, uh, Mr. Kamara, purchased the Rex Hotel in downtown Sharon, 
George Michigini opened the Star Grocery under a new management in the Sheridan Inn. And Jaro Palmazari moved to Colorado to establish a photo studio. And we wanted to thank the Wyoming Room and Catherine Melzna for the photos. And if you attended last month's Explore History, Cindy Jordan is the one who helped us put a lot of this information for our Japanese community. NB Avenue. So the land that is now Sheridan was once inhabited by many of our regional Plains Indian tribes. The Crow tribe would have inhabited this area during the fur trade time period. The Crow tribe's place name for Goose Creek is Ashula, meaning Middle River. Middle River flows through Cloud Peak area into or away from the Bighorn Mountains and then into Sheridan. And the Cloud Peak area is a sacred place to the Crow tribe. So it is documented in the 1830s that the Crow tribe chief, Ella Plush, or also known as Sore Belly, a river Crow leader, was describing the Bighorn Mountains region to Mr. Robert Campbell, who was part of the Rocky Mountain Fur Company. And Sore Belly describes the landscapes, the surrounding areas of the Bighorn Mountains and what makes it so important to the tribe. And he kind of ends that with it's everything is good to be found here and it's the right place to live. Um, and you can read his whole text or translation of the text on the Little Big Horn College website. West Work Street. So we're coming closer into downtown area. Um, Henry Held homesteaded this area in 1882. Henry was the only blacksmith between Cheyenne, Wyoming and Miles City, Montana. And he was also one of the founders of the city of Sheridan. Henry had priority number nine water rights from Big Goose Creek to support his agriculture endeavors with the NB held ditch. This specific ditch became the Sheridan town ditch and was the means to divert water from Big Goose Creek for either domestic use, but also fire to prevent help about fires. Um, construction of the ditch was on May 1883 to the spring of 1885. The ditch was two miles long and began on the south bank of Big Goose Creek in the area of present day Leopard Street. And then it meandered east to the current location near the courthouse. Um, in the beginning, the town diverted that main ditch into other ditches into the town as water resources. After Henry finished the construction of the ditch on August 18th, 1885, he sold five sixths of it to the city of Sheridan. And within that sales agreement, there was a stipulation that the city of Sheridan would provide Henry with one foot of water for his personal use for 99 years. So through technological advances, we have now water work pipelines, reservoirs, and water treatment plants for the city of Sheridan that still utilize Big Goose Creek. And also want to thank the Wyoming Room for a lot of this information. And also Tom Ringley wrote a nice article for the Sheridan Press entitled Henry's Ditch, which gives further details. Kendrick Park. So as you know, Big Goose Creek runs through Kendrick Park, and this waterway has been a natural resource to the regional Plains Indian tribe who hunted in this area known as the Powder River Basin. Um, the Big Goose Creek Buffalo Jump is an archaeological site, and it is on the Wyoming listing of the National Registry of Historic Places. In 1966, Dr. George Frizen, the Wyoming state archaeologist, began archaeological tests and excavations of this site. These invest investigations continued through 1970 and revealed a site along Big Goose Creek, and it was determined it was used in the late 15th or early 16th century, placing it in the prehistoric period. The site consists of a drive lane where the bison were led to the jump off point and the stream below near the kill area. So that water source to do production with the meat would have been Big Goose Creek. And there are many buffalo jump sites in Sheridan County. 
And there's more information on the Wyoming State Historic Preservation Office website for that one too. No park, currently no park is under construction. We'll see what brings in the spring. Um, the mill park site was once a booming flour mill and elevator known as the Sheridan Manufacturing Company flour mill, and it dominated that whole Sheridan neighborhood. Big and Little Goose Creeks also flow together near the east side of the park. A mill race did cut across a curve of Big Goose Creek and powered the mill by a large wheel. A mill race is a channel that delivers water from a nearby stream that drives the mill or hydropower system, which powers the mechanical device for the milling and grinding operation of wheat into flour. The mill race probably occupied the portion of Big Goose Creek, which is now routed in front of High School Hill where the junior high sits on top. Um, and the mill was located directly across Marion Street off of Lewis Street. So John and Fred Wetner were brothers who came to Sheridan to start the mill. The mill produced 25 barrels a day of white swan or sifted snow flour. In 1915, the wooden mill burned to the ground and was quickly replaced by a brick mill. So the mill was then powered by electricity from an electric dynamo or also known as a generator. From a 1916 newspaper announcement, it is seen that the mill is back in operation and the Sheridan Manufacturing Company is requesting the community to come back and purchase its goods. So by 1920, the mill was called the Pioneer Water Mill Flour and Elevator. And with the new expansions of the mill, it was producing 60 to 75 barrels a day. So it really upped its production. The mills were a major component of the economy of North Central Wyoming and provided collection, storage, and milling of locally produced wheat and even wheat that came from southeastern Sheridan County. By 1947, the mill was no longer an option. who led the American troops during the Great Sioux War. The fountain was originally dedicated to a civic-minded flower proprietress, Mrs. Margaret Wetner. Under the direction of Water Commissioner Art Swickard, the city of Sheridan built the fountain in 1938. It was dedicated to Mrs. Margaret Wetner, who was the owner of the flour mill. The dedication is for working and helping the city to prevent floods from Big Goose Creek. She basically donated the land to help with the flood prevention project. So in 1964, an interpretive sign was put near the fountain and that sign contained information about Mr. Cook's expedition, General Cook's expedition. So over the years, the name got changed to Cook's Fountain with association of the sign. So I'd like to mention who the first dedication was. And also with my ongoing research, this is part of my Big Blue Creek walking tour. I would like to, if anybody knows any more information about Mrs. Margaret Wetner, so I'm looking for more on her. Dana Avenue. The Thorn Rider Stadium was established after Count Frederick Thorn Rider, who tuned into a KWYO Saturday morning radio series. The radio program featured three local sports enthusiasts who were discussing active local sports programs and the community's lack of proper facilities to support them. During the program, there was an announcement that a drive was in the planning stages to raise money to build a stadium with a ballpark, and that estimate to build those stadiums and ballpark was $20,000. So after the radio broadcast, Count Thorn Rider made a few phone calls and arrangements were made with the city of Sheridan clerk for contributions for this ballpark. So a year later, the stadium opened in 1950. 
provisions from the Thorn Rider Foundation enabled further development of the stadium property and to continue with the vision and the Thorn Rider Park's vision is the enjoyment of adults and use of Sheridan County community for recreation. So a little back information on Count Frederick Thorn Rider. He was originally from Jersey City, Jersey City, New Jersey, and he came to Wyoming to open a law practice. The mountains and open prairies kept him through the one through the fall and then into the winter. So he saw the Wyoming winter. And then he began to work at the Big Red Ranch, which is present day Ducos as a bookkeeper. He stayed here for five years and he returned to the Mid-Atlantic area because of his health. He married Harriet Hartog in 1920. And in 1936, during World War II, they lived in Buffalo, Wyoming for about 10 years, and then they moved north to Sheridan. Um, this site was called North Park, now it's Malcolm Wallop Park. And again, please bear with me with my Japanese pronunciation. Shinzaburo Ban was the Japanese businessman behind S. Ban and Company that was a labor contractor company. And he was also instrumental in bringing Japanese ancestry to the United States to work on railroad companies and also in our mines. The 1898 annexation of Hawaii was the boom to the labor contractors business that allowed Japanese workers to travel freely to the US and then to the mainland. For the service of the S. Ban and company, Ban collected a commission of 10 cents a day for each worker. There were four branches of offices of S. Ban and company. One was in Portland, Oregon, Denver, Colorado, Ogden, Utah, and Sheridan, Wyoming. Once the Japanese workers arrived at one of the branches of the company, Ban provided housing, transportation, as well as connecting the workers to the hiring companies. So in Sheridan, the S Band Company office was located on North Crook Street, and unmarried Japanese men roomed at the Japanese boarding houses. One was called the Sanyo Hotel, later known as Sumada House, and J. Hozaki's Japanese Hotel, and they were both located at the north end of Sheridan near the railroad tracks. The contractor also provided medical care and for their funerals if the workers or the family members died during this time. So most deaths were imposed by accidents or a variety of illnesses. And also during this time period when the Japanese workers were here, the Spanish influenza epidemic of 1918 was prevalent in Sheridan County. So those who died in the Japanese community were buried in the Mount Hope Cemetery, which is now the Sheridan Municipal Cemetery. And there's beautiful tall markers with Japanese characters as their resting places. And from this picture, that is one of the rubbings from one of the tall markers. And the University of Wyoming Language Department helped us out with translation of the woman's name. And also, again, Cindy Georgian helped a lot with this information from all her research with the Japanese community. So we are moving on now to the Tongue River and Goose Creek sites, which is the northern part of our water trail, following along with your map. So our first stop is on Goose Creek and um, Padlock Ranch, which it is on their property, the access site. And the, or I decided to put the beginning of cattle, the, the cattle drives and early ranching on this site. So the cattle drive routes were created to move cattle and take advantage of the open range and grazing all the way up to as north as Canada. So these routes that the leggy Texan Longhorns traveled were known as the Texas Trail. So the Texas Trail entered Wyoming near Cheyenne and then headed north to Fort Laramie, Newcastle, Upton, and then to the Moorcroft area all along the Powder River area. And then sometimes the routes splintered into Sheridan County. 
So during the travel across the Great Plains, the herds were moved slowly to avoid a stampede. Cowboys were usually paid at the end of the ride and some rode to their home and others stayed and started their own ranches in our area. In 1894, at the height of traffic on the Texas Trail, it is estimated that 32,000 steers passed through the Powder River area. And that's the trip from Texas to Montana. So each herd possibly averaged 2,000 to 3,000 head. Cleanburn Recreation Site. Um, this is also an abandoned mine lands program project, a reclamation project. In 2009, AML and the Wyoming Game and Fish Department partnered to reclaim hazardous conditions left from historic coal mining activity resulting in today's Cleanburn Recreation Area. The success of this project was nationally recognized in 2011 with the Western Region Abandoned Mineland Reclamation Award by the United States Department of Interior Office and Surface Mining. And a little background history about Green Burn Mine, if you're not familiar with our mines north of Sheridan. In 1904, Kearney Coal Company of Iowa opened Kearney Mine north of Clean Burn Recreation Area across the Tongue River. You can see foundations from the tipple in this park. Um, behind the tipple and extended into the hillside was the mine itself. So with the reclamation, that is where the water area is in the park. Um, Peabody Coal Company purchased the company in 1921 and changed the name to Cleanburn. The name Cleanburn comes from a contest um, that the coal company put among its employees as a trade name. So a stenographer in the Peabody Company at the Chicago office won the contest with the slogan, it's clean coal and it burns clean, clean burn. So in the spring of 1923, clean burn mines closed due to shortage of orders. So when the mine shut down, 295 men were out of work. However, the town that started with Carneyville remained for 10 years and then the Peabody company abandoned it in 1933. So if you're familiar where the Cleanburn Recreation is, if you drive past both those entrances and you go over the railroad tracks and before you come to the I-90 overpass, there's an open field and that's where the town was. Okay. Welch Ranch Recreation Area. So on this site, there used to be a stucco house near the location of where the overpass is that crosses the Tongue River. The ranch was owned by Simon Evans, who immigrated to the U.S. from Wales in the 1870s. He was a postmaster for the Dewey Post Office for several years, and this was also located in his stucco home. Simon tilled the hundreds of acres of land, planted grain and alfalfa, and there was a small orchard on the ranch. He realized that his crops needed to be irrigated and the Tongue River ran the full length of the meadows. To provide water to his crops, he understood he had to dam a portion of the Tongue River over the hill from his ranch. So he built the dam and ditches and a 600 foot tunnel through the hill to get the water to his crops. It's a lot of digging. <laughs> This three-year irrigation project took three men to complete it. Simon lived in the area for 12 years with his wife, Mary Jenkins, and they had four children. They moved to a smaller ranch on Lower Prairie Dog Creek. So during Simon's time in the United States, he did make a couple trips back to Wales, and one of them was to marry Mary Jenkins. I also want to mention the regional Plain Indian tribes relationship to our Tongue River area. Um, so the Bighorn Mountains was the western edge of the Lakota Nation territory. And while many Lakota were in areas central around the Black Hills, a large number of Lakota established camps in the western area to counter the travelers of the Bozeman Trail. 
Several headmen of the Lakota were making efforts to halt the newcomers as a result of the Sand Creek Massacre on November 29, 1864, that took place in Colorado on a peaceful village of Cheyenne in Arapaho, and it was destroyed. Many of the Lakota had intermarried with the Cheyenne, and many became like one group. Lakota bands who now reside along the Tongue River with the Cheyenne included the Minikoju, Ogala, Second, Secondario, and it's Apacho. I'm still learning some of those names, so bear with me. They are the bands of the Lakota. Um, so the bands of the Lakota still had people in other areas of the vast nation, but many from these bands were now here for the warfare. They had been centered around the Powder River country and then moved in to patrol the area known as the Bozeman Trail. From the Lakota and Cheyenne, many famous battles are known around Sheridan. And there's also lesser known battles between the tribes and also, of course, ceremonial or burial places. Some of these incidents um, also included the Arapaho, which was a smaller population of a tribe. By the time the reservation era for the Lakota came along, they were removed from this Bighorn area and then placed on present day reservations in South Dakota, such as Pine Ridge, Rosebud, Sandy Rock, Cheyenne River, and Lower Brule. And um, I wanted to thank Donovan Sprague, who is a history faculty at Sheridan College for this information. Also, how did the Tongue River get its name? Um, I'm also sharing the regional Plains Indian tribes place names for the Tongue River. And I'm not good enough yet to say those names to you out loud, but you can see them. Um, so according to Crow Heritage, a Crow Indian medicine man held a huge sun dance near the headwaters of the river and required the sacramental use of 100 tons of the buffalo. This was a rather unusual large amount of tons, so thereafter they would refer to this river as the Tongue River. And this is from Joseph Medicine Crow's research from 1963. And that is our virtual tour of our Tongue River water trail. And if anybody has any comments or additional information, I can 